were built back in the days when somebody had a milk cow and maybe a beef animal that they that they kept around a pig or two. Uh, it's not really made for production agriculture. So we do the best we can with it. We built these feed bunks in here. Everything's got to be hand fed. Most feed lots that you'd see bigger operations have like feed wagons, feed trucks, things like that that go down an alleyway and feed them. We can't really get a feed truck in here, so we do it all by hand. Um, because of that, uh, we try to find things that uh, labor-wise, we don't have to carry as much feed. Um, so we feed these guys shelled corn, um, which um, by the way that these animals work, uh, when you're feeding things like grains, you don't have to feed them near as much as you would a roughage. So uh, if we were feeding silage like most areas would, um, it would take a lot of hand feeding silage here. Um, instead, we're feeding corn, so it's, it's a little bit more limited. They're getting the same amount of energy and nutrients out of the less of the product. Now, you know, a year like this when corn prices are extremely high, it's a little more expensive for us. It would be a lot more cost effective to feed, to feed silage, but at the same time, uh, we have to do what we have to do. So, um, over here in this bin, you guys can kind of look. I don't know how much you guys have been around farm operations and things like that, but we've got some different feed stuffs in here. The shelled corn is just the, uh, in the bin here. Um, it's not been run through a roller mill, it's not cracked or anything like that. It's just shelled corn, just right out of the combine. So. Uh, we feed this to them. Uh, what we do when we move them in here, we start them off on a really uh, low grain diet. Uh, we may start them off on four or five pounds of corn per head per day, um, and then we and, and then free choice hay. We give them as much hay as they can eat. And then as they start to get bigger um, and they and they get used to eating the corn, uh, we up the amount of corn slowly. And we back the hay off slowly. So. For instance, right now, these guys are getting right at about 20 pounds of corn a day per head, um, and then uh, about two pounds of hay, which you can see they're eating on the hay now. We just threw that in here a while back. Um, so we, we limit feed the hay, and then uh, we're, we're, we're really pushing the corn to them at this point uh, to try to finish them. Um, <clears throat> that's kind of the way our feeding system goes on these calves. Um, the reason we, had, we start them off on such a, uh, low amounts of corn uh, the way their bodies are, are made um, <clears throat> uh, with, the, with the rumen, the stomach, they're ruminant animal, um, you know, they've got four stomachs, so they can digest things that, that we can't. Um, you know, if you stuck me out here on a pasture all summer and just told me to eat the grass there, I'm going to come in pretty thin, which maybe I need to, but um, <laughs> it's not going to work out that well. Uh, but uh, they can take grass and things like that and, and, and utilize it and turn it into something we can't eat. Um, so that's why we're, you know, that's kind of our, our business, I guess. Um, and uh, when we're feeding them corn, uh, if we took an animal that wasn't on corn, just used to being on grass, and we poured 20 pounds of corn in front of it, it's going to eat it. It likes the taste of it, okay? But just like if, um, oh, if me and you were just kind of getting by on, on something small, eating some bread every day and for, for a month or two, and then somebody took us out to the smorgasbord and we went to town, we're going to be a little bit sick that evening. And that's the way these guys will be too. So we have to start them off on low amounts of corn and slowly increase it, okay? Um, the corn, it, 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 the large amounts doesn't hurt their body as long as they're used to it. Um, their, their rumen has to get used to that, that environment. So um, that's why we do that. Some other things we have here, I've got silage in a pan here. If any of you's never seen corn silage, um, to rotate down here a little more and we can maybe slide around and try to look at more of the feed stuff. The, uh, um, how, have, have most of you been around farms before or not at all? I'm, I'm not sure what kind of level we have here, so I don't want to. I mean, this is probably, I would say most people, this is for the majority of the audience, probably their initial visit to a farm. Okay, all right, great. And then we definitely have some ag people who have been at a farm a lot, okay. but I think it's okay to see the I didn't want to, okay, I didn't want to uh, uh, under talk or, or over talk. <laughs> no, cool. of, okay, so. I mean, come on down um, if you haven't seen the, the feed corn, stuff and put um, your hands in it. We've got some more room down here. If you can't hear, you can come down here to this side more. This is pretty much uh, corn off the cob is what it is. Uh, you know, the corn plant grows, it, it makes a cob, and this is off of The combine goes through and pulls this off. So that's that part of it. Uh, silage is actually the entire plant. We go through and we use a chopper, goes through the field, it picks the entire plant and, and um, chops it up into, in, into this, okay? Um, so you've got stalk there, you've got leaf, and you've got corn too, which, you know, there's a piece of corn right there. Um, what this is, 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 is what we're doing here is we're actually making corn kind of into a roughage, all right? Um, it's, 
it, it'll, when we talked about them needing roughage, well, you know, these animals need roughage in their stomach to keep that, that stomach has to have roughage and it has to have that fiber in there and long, long pieces of stems. Uh, that's what makes that, that stomach work. Uh, it it kind of tickles the stomach for the most part and it keeps it churning and keeps that corn moving and keeps that feed stuff moving so it can digest it. Um, and in these cows, they go down, they eat it, and you see them swallow it, and then you see, you've heard of cows chewing cud, chewing their cud, uh, standing around just chewing. They actually regurgitate that back up. Um, they, they swallow it down. They'll take this and just swallow it, okay? Uh, they really don't chew on it. They just kind of swallow it. Um, and then they get their bellies full. They go out in the pasture somewhere where they can see all around them, and they're happy, and they're not worried about somebody getting them. And uh, they sit down there, and they bring it back up, chew it up into finer parcels, and that, that's how that stomach works. Okay, so that's what chewing cut is. Uh, it's called ruminating, actually. Uh, their stomach's called a rumen, and uh, they ruminate. So, um, <clears throat> so anyway, that's that's the whole plant when it's chopped up, and you can smell it. We we put it in bags or silos, and it goes through a fermentation process for the most part. And you you'll smell it if you come by here. It's got a it's, it's a really um, um, unique smell to it. Um, you know, some uh, some people like the smell. I, I I think it smells good, but I hear people that say, "Boy, that stuff's awful smelling." So uh, it's kind of got a sweet smell to me. So, but you guys are welcome to come up and look at it. Um, the second one I got here, uh, this is a protein uh, pellet. Uh, we also feed this with the corn, being that the corn is is corn is actually fairly low protein. It's got about nine percent protein in it. And for their growth needs uh, at this point in the stage of their life and to help them grow, uh, they actually need more protein than that. So there's different ways of getting more protein. We could feed higher quality hay that's higher protein, but we want it, roughages don't make them grow near as fast, so we try to stay away from that um, uh, from an efficiency standpoint. So what we can do is they take, it's pretty much bean meal, soybean, um, and, and it's, it's ground up, it's put into pellet form that we can mix right in with this corn and it'll be mixed in and they eat that. So really they're getting their, their energy from this. This is a high energy corn. Um, uh, corn is high in, high in energy. And then they're getting their protein from this, okay? It's just like you eat a well-rounded meal. Um, you know, that's what we're trying to do with them. Um, we know what it takes for them to, to, what their nutrient requirements are, and we try to meet those to help, help them make it more efficient. So that's what this is, just a protein supplement. It's also got um, uh, some buffers in it. Uh, that help buffer their stomach. So we talked about if they get too much corn or something. Uh, you know, we pour this out in here, um, and uh, each one we, we measure it so that each cow, each animal in here gets 20 pounds of corn. Well, uh, let's just say one of them doesn't come up today uh, to eat for whatever reason. You know, maybe he was up eating last last night and and didn't come up this morning. Well, that means one of those is going to get a little extra. Um, so we can't completely control how much those animals are getting. Uh, and, and this has kind of a, a stomach buffer in it. Um, you can kind of think of it as like a antacid tablet for the most part. Um, that if one of them uh, gets to that point where they, they get too much of that uh, uh, starch in their stomach and it starts to get acidic to them, it helps settle their stomach a little bit. So we have that in there as well just for precaution for the most part. Uh, and it also, being it's a buffer, it does help them uh, grow a little bit as well. It, it, it helps that animal as far as... Um, um, far as their growth. Um, so that's what that is. <clears throat>